All right, everyone, it's time for Vermont Issues, episode 135. Vermont has warmed about 1.4 degrees on average since the 1970s. Now, when I look at warming versus cooling trends, I say it is a long-term cycle with short-term cycles within it as part of a much, much longer, longer-term cycle lasting thousands or tens of thousands of years and that overall... Uh, I do not believe climate change is primarily driven by mankind's uh, own activity. I simply don't. I do think it's dumb to say, well, the climate never changes. Of course it does. We are in a warming trend right now. What I predict, though, is that some hundreds of years later, it's going to cool off significantly, and the next cooling trend will probably be somewhat cooler than the last some hundreds of years ago. Like the Maunder Minimum, you'll, you'll have another one of those at some point. I think there are feedback mechanisms involved that uh, prevent any long-term catastrophic changes at this time. Uh, I think that over time, the, the shift of the continents, uh, long, long-term, would probably be a much bigger indicator of weather, considering how weather patterns are generated in the first place. Now, hell, a sun getting older eventually is going to bake the Earth uh, into a lifeless ball of char, so keep that in mind. Uh, but from the Vermont perspective, this article is talking about Vermont and Minnesota particularly. While they're warming faster than everywhere else, that's just a function of it can't get colder in these regions. If Vermont can't get colder, if we warm 1.4 degrees, it's still one step from Arctic tundra. Asking people, I think, in places that typically are quite cold, like northern New England, Minnesota, you know, other you know, parts of the, the high mountains of Colorado, places where it's cold, Asking them to care so much about global warming or climate change or whatever moniker you choose to give it is going to be a lot harder. It's going to be harder to convince somebody living here that it's a problem than somebody who's living in a climate that's already like, you know, hot and humid. Like, they live in uh, Tampa. They live in, <laughs> in the middle of Texas. Or, yeah, probably they're used to like really hot days. Here, the average person doesn't own an AC in the, in the state of Vermont. If they do, it's like one of those little mobile units. Like we have one, and you know, two days of the year you might set it up because you know it happens to be stagnant and humid. It's also on the hotter end. You know, you get a heat wave. It's like 85 degrees, and so it can be a little oppressive if it's humid. And you're like, well, you know, you can, you can tolerate it, but you know, why not just hook up the unit? Then things will be cool. But uh, it's a little bit different. Having lived most of my life in the state of Vermont, I can tell you. Um, there is no, in short term, at least in that span, there's no real rhyme or reason to the uh, winter temperatures. Like, uh, I think it was 2014's winter, we had the polar vortex thing, which is like the Arctic air dipped down extra low, so that we were basically getting air from <laughs> the Arctic Circle. Uh, it was not pleasant, it was like 20, 25 below zero on a fairly regular basis there for over a month. For several months, it was definitely below zero. It was like being in, in the permafrost. It was like being in northern Alaska in the most literal sense weather-wise. It was shit. And then, of course, uh, sandwiching around that, we've had a couple of uh, extra warm winters. I think the last winter was tolerable, um, although it was a little cooler than before. And then we have the polar vortex winter, then another warm one. And then we have a couple of like roughly average uh, winters. And then going back further, I think there was one other winter but I can never remember, the, I think it was 2010 or, or 2009, it was really, really warm and really, really pleasant. Like there was green grass in the middle of February. I loved it. So I don't have a problem with this. Uh, looking back at the recent span of time, I'm simply not compelled to feel, uh, I, I just don't understand why people are quite so upset since there's nothing they can do about it. Like if human activity is causing climate change, we're fucked, we're screwed. Uh, we're going to have to see where that change leads us and if there's a feedback mechanism to protect us because you're never going to eliminate the heavy industry. You can build all, all the, you can plant all the trees and tear up the industry here and, uh, you know, have CO2 tax or whatever you want here in the West. The industry will move elsewhere. There will always be some country increasingly richer and richer the more other countries stop doing such things. There will always be somewhere where things have to be manufactured. And the politicians know this. They know that if they crack down on things here, that you get more factories in India and China. Now, they're smart enough to know that the same amount of pollutant is still being created. In fact, far more in the localized sense, because over there, they'll just dump their waste everywhere. Nobody gives a fuck. 
Uh, but they're not going to tell you that because they're doing this for they're doing this to drive wedge issues for for being elected, uh, get more money for their their government spending. Of course, most of it never actually is used for the purpose it's supposed to be. It's vampirized off elsewhere. They want more money for tanks. They want more money for they want to line their pockets, pay off their donors. That's what ends up happening. So don't give me that bullshit about oh we need to do more to tackle climate change. It's not going to work. It would need a world government to tackle the issue, but that's the thing. It would never get tackled. You'd still have the industry somewhere anyway. There's no benevolent government force that actually believes in this bullshit that's going to stop it uh, from happening. If it's real and it's man-made, we're fucked. If it's real and it's natural, we're just going to have to deal with it. That's about all. Peace out.